So there is no limit to the size uh, if you don't treat them. You find it early, it's just like little speckles of salt. Okay. Mm. Then it forms a small little nodule. It can be like an M&M or a peanut. Mm -hmm. And then it can grow to something like a little marble to a ping pong ball. Chào đón các bạn đang đến với Nhật ký bác sĩ nơi sẽ kết nối câu chuyện y đức từ tâm của các bác sĩ đầu ngành tại Vinmec. Và các bạn không chỉ được lắng nghe và cập nhật những thông tin và kiến thức quan trọng về y khoa mà còn được lắng nghe những câu chuyện đầy cảm hứng từ hành trình nghề nghiệp của các bác sĩ của chúng ta. Viewers, welcome back to Doctor's Diary and I'm so glad to bring Dr. Hartman back to the studio today. In the uh, previous episode, we explored the importance of early detection and shared some of the very emotional story on your career path on the journey. Today, we'll be diving into um, your main role, breast surgery. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you back here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Okay, let's start with complex question. In what situation does a cancer patient need to undergo a breast surgery? Well, actually the question is, the answer is very straightforward. Every uh, woman with a breast cancer needs surgery at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So surgery is the most important part of uh, the journey to cure. Surgery may not be the first modality that we offer, but at some point in time they will need to have the tissue removed. May not be the whole breast, but at least where the tumor was. Yeah, but the, the reason I hold the question is somewhat complex, yeah. because I call it from the perspective of yeah. the patient. Yes. They're scared. Of, yeah. uh, can you share about some um, stories of yeah, why so they, they scared that? Most patients are worried about surgery. They're worried about the general anesthesia, meaning that loss of control, the sleeping, will I wake up? Mm -hmm. So that requires just one conversation for them to understand that the process of falling asleep, sleeping and then waking up is very straightforward and very low, limited risk. Mm -hmm. The other conversation, which is a bit longer, is about the surgery. Understanding that they need to have it removed, I think they can understand. Well, what most of them are worried about is pain, which is understandable because once you have surgery, you can envision that it's painful. But uh, it's remarkably little pain in the post-operative care of patients with breast cancer. Uh, just taking a few tablets to manage the pain for maybe a week or so is usually enough. So once you've put those two concerns away, the general anesthesia is safe and effective, and surgery is it's not painful, now it's a good time to discuss the type of surgery they would need. Mm -hmm. So what are the type of surgery they would need? They need to have the tumor removed. Now that gives us generally three options. One is we save the breast, so we call that breast conserving surgery or a lumpectomy, okay. meaning that the tumor with a bit of margin is removed, but the breast remains. The other option is uh, what we call a mastectomy, which is a complete removal of the breast. Uh, so now we remove the breast, the skin, the nipple areolar complex, and it becomes flat on that side. Mm -hmm. Now, a newer technique is to then do a reconstruction at the same time. When I say new, it's not necessarily new this week, but it's been around for 20 plus years. Okay. So we can reconstruct the breast when we save skin, possibly save the nipple, we remove the breast gland, but we replace the volume with something else. Either put a silicon implant there, take tissue from the back, mm. or take tissue from your tummy. So interesting. Mm. But, um, I remember the um, Angelina Jolie case. Her case is special in the sense that she's a carrier of a high penetrant gene called BRCA1. So what that means is that she has a mutation that with that mutation it gives her a risk of breast cancer which exceeds 50%. 
she also has about a 30% risk of ovarian cancer. So once you know that you're a carrier of that gene, we would then remove the breast in order for her not to develop breast cancer. So she had both breasts removed, both breasts reconstructed. And her story is so inspiring as yes. well. And could you share some advances in breast surgery? Uh, does that help preserve a woman's confidence and quality of life? So we work with the principle of keeping it as simple as possible while maximizing the chance of cure. So the simplest way to solve the surgical problem is usually to do breast conserving surgery because the recovery is a lot faster. So the advancement here is that breast conserving surgery can go from the simple to the very complicated. So what I mean by that is that our ability to save the breast is a function of the tumor size to the breast volume. Mm -hmm. The larger the breast is, the easier breast conserving surgery is because you can take out a larger volume of breast without being noticed. Once that ratio goes beyond 15% or so, you need to do more advanced things. So that means that you need to move breast tissue around to recreate the shape of a breast. And that comes in sort of four different stages. From the simple is just to remove the lump. The not so simple is to move a little bit of the surrounding tissue. Mm. To the third is to shift the nipple areolar complex a little bit. And the fourth, more complicated, is that you make little flaps. Mm. where like trap doors you take from the rich you give it to the poor so it's still the breast gland is largely still there but now you can remove as much as 30 percent of the breast and uh, still have it look like a breast mm, i'm enlightened by a lot of um, advancement in in in, in um, technology of medical right uh, i'm curious are these advancements available in in vietnam as well yes well they are they they're available uh, as far as the surgeon has the technical ability to do so. But at Vinmec we're able to provide a full service if, if the patient wishes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the size of the tumor. The size of the tumor is small like this or big? Can you give me some visual um, illustration? Yeah. You find it early, it's just uh, like little speckles of salt. Okay. Mm. Then it forms a small little nodule. It can be like an M&M or a peanut. Mm -hmm. And then it can grow to something like a little marble, to a ping pong ball, to a, you know, <laughs> an orange, to as big as a basketball. Mm -hmm. So there is no limit to the size uh, if you don't treat them. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take basically for, for a surgery? So breast conserving surgery would take about an hour and a half uh, and when you do the little bit more advanced things uh, uh, such as maybe reduce the size of both breasts. Now it can take up to three hours when we put flaps in it can mm -hmm. take three to four hours. Mm -hmm. But for women might uh, be facing breast cancer surgery, what advice would you give them for the preparation of the surgery? It's basically to, I suggest to them to start thinking in terms of, is it important for her to keep the breast? So if it's important for her to keep the breast, mm -hmm. then we have multiple techniques that would allow us to help her do so. If it's not important for her to keep the breast, then the option of a mastectomy or a mastectomy with reconstruction becomes the next two options. Mm -hmm. But I, I assume that most of the time the women would choose to keep the breast, am it, I right? Yeah, no, it varies. Um, so it, it, it's an individual choice, mm -hmm. uh, but it could be for a number of reasons. Yeah. One is that they, they really, um, one argument that I hear from them is that I'm old already. <laughs> Doesn't matter, just mm -hmm. remove it. Like, second could be that Doing breast conserving surgery, you need to be willing to accept the potential of a second surgery. Oh. If the margins are not all clear, mm -hmm. you may need to go back and to do a second surgery to clear the margins. Mm -hmm. And once that is done, you need to have radiation. Radiation could be anywhere from 15 to 25 times, which could then, it results in three weeks to four weeks of daily radiation. Radiation itself is simple, it takes a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You get a bit of sunburn in the skin, but the woman may say, nah, 
either I don't mind the cosmetic deformity or I don't want the second surgery or I really don't want to inconvenience my family to have to drive me to the hospital. So those could be typically the normal reasons for not wanting breast conserving surgery when you're eligible for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally understandable, especially when you have to have a strong determination yeah. Yeah, to make your decision as well, right? Yeah. You came to Vietnam, you met Vietnamese patients. Yes. Any impression with the Vietnamese patient when you try to talk to them, to consult them? to come up with the uh, surgery, uh, yes, breast I, surgery? I think in general, a Vietnamese woman is more inclined to ask for a mastectomy, mm -hmm. uh, which means I, I need to spend a little bit more time to mm -hmm. educate her about her alternatives and her options. Let her know that the chance of cure is the same with mm -hmm. all the other options, including saving the breast, and that the breast conserving surgery is A, safe, two, gives recoveries faster, and three, it provides less cosmetic uh, deformity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at the same time, consult them, but also educate them yes. to come to a right decision. Yeah. Ultimately, she decides it's her body, it's her disease. Everyone should have that thought, your body, your decision, right? Yeah. You don't uh, have anyone to decide yeah. instead of you, okay? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hartman, for sharing your expertise today. It's been a pleasure to learning more about the breast surgery and the way that you approach to, to breast surgery and how you're helping women not only to survive but to thrive after their treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can we see you to, to get the consultancy when I'm in Vietnam? Yeah, so I, I practice uh, when I'm here either at Vinmec Central Park or at Vinmec uh, Times City. So I'm happy to see whoever would like to be seen. Okay, so viewer, if you have any uh, problem, you want to, um, to have Dr. Hartman uh, consultancy, you can go to Vinmec Times City and Vinmec Central Park. And if you are watching the show at home and have some question, just leave your comment below and Dr. Hartman will try to answer all of your um, question and also curiosity about breast cancer. If you want to uh, have more consultancy with Dr. Hartman, he will be available at Vinmec Time City and Vinmec uh, Central Park in Ho Chi Minh City as well. My pleasure. And viewers, stay tuned for our last episode with Dr. Hartman on Vinmec YouTube channel. And uh, now, if you have any further question, leave your comment below and we try to make the connection to Dr. Hartman as soon as possible. And now, goodbye. <laughs>